Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing social media and is it actually good for our parrots and our responsible ownership of parrots. There's lots of ways that social media is quite toxic actually to parrots and I want to discuss that topic with you guys and maybe get your opinions at the end of this video on what you think about it. Now, the first point is the biggest double-edged sword of social media and that is there is so much easily accessible information out there for parrots, looking after them, feeding them, everything else. It's really, really good how accessible information is about parrots these days. However, the other flip side of that is a lot of this information, sadly, is rubbish. Um, I'm sorry to say, a lot of it's old school, a lot of it's like just conjecture, it's a lot of it just personal opinion, presented as fact, and it's really, really quite frustrating for well, me and Sophie to see, you know, how much is not scientifically based, it's just people presenting information as fact. And this is the biggest double-edged sword when it comes to social media. You know, you've got so much easily accessible information, there's loads of great information out there, but you also have so much rubbish. And I find it quite, um, yeah, it's just quite difficult to sort of reconcile. And it must be frustrating for you guys when you watch videos and then you see someone say something, then you see something, someone say something else. It's very confusing. I imagine it's very confusing for newer power owners as well. So I feel the best solution to this is just do lots of research and go with what you think feels right. What makes the most sense when you're looking at social media? Because it's, even if you just go shopping sometimes, you know, just looking at all the options can be very difficult. So you have to sort of use your common sense and go with what you feel is right and what is the most common thing that says that said that makes sense. A place where I feel social media is quite toxic and isn't the best is how it creates the wrong impression for new parrot owners. A lot of people present their parrots as angelic, you know, all you see is the good side, you see like the funny tricks, and I know I do that as well, but I do it for a very different reason. And you see all of the just everything that's great about our parrots. You never see the bad side. People actively hide it so they don't want to look bad. And it gives this bad, wrong impression for new owners. They think, oh yeah, conyers are going to be easy. Uh, great video, by the way, on that, on my channel, how conyers are not start off those. I'll leave you a link for that now. And just, yeah, basically parrots aren't easy. You can, anyone can look after a parrot, but they have to be prepared for all the, the bad side of it. You know, they can't think it's going to be an easy experience. You know, if you're prepared for those sort of flip sides, like the noise, you know, the biting, etc., etc., and to work through them, awesome. That's great. But don't think that it's not going to happen. Some parrots will be a lot easier than others. They're all individuals. So, yeah. I just think it's really annoying when all you see is one side of the coin and you don't see all of the work that goes into parrot training and just basically looking after them. This one, probably lots of you have encountered on social media, especially when you're looking for parent information or just some help and advice, and that is judgment. There is lots and lots of judgment, and I guess this is true across all communities on the internet. When it comes to parent ownership, people will judge you, you will ask a question, and instead of getting the answers, you will get judged for whatever the problem is. And I don't think that's a very helpful thing. You may be doing something wrong, but judging you for that isn't gonna help you ultimately. I think just providing useful advice, educating, trying to get people to change opinions is much more helpful. And you find lots of cliques on the internet, cliques in various communities, uh, on Facebook groups, social groups, where you'll just get judged basically, you won't get what you want. And I think that's really toxic and it's not helpful to anyone. I think, why bother? And that leads on to my next point, and that is competition. And I think this is where maybe some of the judgment comes from. People use looking after their parrots as some sort of competition. The most common one I've seen is my parrot out 24 seven and they you know, have free roam. If your parrot isn't out 24 seven, then you're a rubbish owner, blah, 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 blah. And again, why, have, why is it a competition? Why does it need to be a competition? We just all want to do the best for our parrots. And if you don't want to do the best for your parrots, then then you should be watching this video already. You're not really someone who should be watching my channel. Bit of judgment for you. There you go. Just joking. Just joking. So anyway, um, there's no competition here. You know, we all just want to do the best. We should be a community. We should be helping each other. And I think that's the best way we're all going to improve. One of the big problems, and that's related to misinformation, is that everyone is apparently an expert on parrots on the internet. Um, it's kind of something me and Sophie run into lots. We don't actually claim to be experts. I suppose you can call us professionals now because we have an awful lot of experience with these little guys. We have professional qualifications. We've worked with them lots in both a voluntary and professional sense. You know, that is really helpful. And a lot of people may just have a parrot for a year, have do a couple of target training sessions, and suddenly they're an expert. And it's, you, you, if you can't call yourself that, it's not 
fair and it's not fair on your clients or other people and again this isn't really unique to the parrot world i i'm a really big believer in experience when it comes to looking after these guys it counts for a lot you know if even if you only had a parrot for a year that counts as experience but then to present yourself as a professional with like two decades of experience isn't really very honest and again isn't very helpful for any clients you may have not everyone is an expert you know, it takes a long time, a lot of practice, a lot of experience. And I don't know, I don't want to tread on anyone's toes with this, but the more experience you get, the more you build on that with professional experience and talk to other people, the more you can call yourself a professional expert. Otherwise, you're just someone who owns parrots, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you, you shouldn't present yourself as something you're not. And also, the other point on that is people who are like that tend to hide mistakes again or almost glorify mistakes and I find that very really difficult as well to deal with because we look at it and we're like come on guys you know you could again be doing better for your parrot you don't need to worry about this stuff stop fit a bleed the ego out of it another problem I have with social media is quite a few is showing dangerous practices and presenting them to the uninformed as great like mixing parrots with dogs you see loads of videos on TikTok with parrots on riding dogs and all sorts of staged photos absolutely terrible I've seen big, bigger people, uh, influencers, using small plastic baggies to train their parrots and play with them. The danger level on that is huge. Uh, again, presenting misinformation, you know, followers does not necessarily mean knowledge, you know. Someone can literally just, like, post a cute video of their ring neck or um, Quaker or whatever, doing something, they can have a million followers. Does not mean they know anything about parrots, you know. It's just they may know a bit, they may not. Don't use followers as your guideline to, for knowledge on parrots, you know. Dangerous practices are dangerous practices and you need to avoid them. It's really important that you sort of use common sense. Little plastic baggies, um, mixing pets and animals, other birds and other animals, it's all very dangerous and you need to be very careful. And again, when it comes to presenting this information to new, potential new owners, it makes me just want a face palm because you're setting them up for failure before because they think this is normal, when in reality it's really not. So guys, if you want to learn a little bit more about what is dangerous to your parrots, I have loads of videos. I'll leave an example now. I've got loads of videos on the channel on how to do things right, which aren't just my opinion, but are based on consensus and lots of other people's opinions as well. Thank you, Fish, for that little nibble. Not very nice. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment on what you think about social media and its influence on parrots and how we look after them, please feel free to leave them down below. But from me, Fish and Chip, who are both very excited this morning, take care and have a really great day.